Hello, folks. Welcome to today's show. Um, are you wondering how to save on business expenses without cutting the wrong things? Maybe you're looking for some income and uh, benefit opportunities that are available to you right now. So are you ready to create an action plan to start saving today? Well, today, this show is for you if you had any of those kind of questions. I'm Jeff C. of Manly Pinterest Tips, and I'm here with my co-host, Elisa Meredith. We are so happy okay. to have you guys on. Um, you want, we want to get to your uh, questions and comments. We're going to try to do that at the end of the show today. So we'll try to pull in as many as we can. But we do have a special worksheet that you can follow along with us uh, as well. You can go to bit.ly forward slash TW survive and thrive. That's bit.ly forward slash TW survive and thrive. Uh, Elisa, great to see you here. Thank you so much. It's nice to see again. you too, Jeff. Yeah. Jeff, do you have the air conditioner running in there today? Oh, yes. Do you want to turn it off? Is it noisy? Oh, it's a, only a little bit, but I also don't want you dying over If I there, die, so. it'll be <laughs> on curious. you and my, my <laughs> family know. knows where to find you. So <laughs> that's right. No, don't, don't, don't roast yourself. Okay. Yeah. So why don't you introduce so, our special guest? Yeah, so we're here on a Tuesday, which is weird, right? Yeah, it is weird. I know. I know. So this is our special series, uh, Survive and Thrive, where we had a we had an interview with Danny so last week or the week before. I guess it was the week before, um, where we talked about all the all the great things we can do in a troubled economy to um, set our business up for success later and also help it to survive for now. Mm -hmm. So this is not a topic on which I am an expert. Um, I'm also not an expert on finance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that is why we are joined by Tailwind's VP of Finance, Andrew English, who we call Andy. I'm just going to call you Andy. I hope that's okay. Yeah, that's good. My mom wouldn't like it, but that's fine. <laughs> really? Ooh, I hope she, she's I'm, not I'm an Andrew. Yeah, I'm an Andrew to her, but Andy to everyone else. Okay. Okay. Very good. Yeah. I mean, I've seen what you've done for Tailwind's budget, and so we really wanted you to help everybody else <laughs> do yeah. something yeah. similar. Yeah. Yeah. Happy to help. So make sure you guys go to this bit.ly forward slash TW Survive and Thrive because we're going to go through some really in-depth stuff today. I know a lot of people, there's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of struggling going on right now. And hopefully this show will kind of help at least give you some ideas on some things to do. So, Elisa, why don't you just go ahead and kick off the questions because, I mean, there's we've got a lot to go over today. But I think there's going to be a lot of valuable inf information. Yeah, I just want to say before we jump in that if you stay to the end... We're going to share also a real life story of a company that they saw their product becoming kind of irrelevant in the stay at home world and they did a really clever comeback. So we're going to be um, giving away a prize to, to one winner. We can't tell you what it is because that would ruin the story. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you have to stick around because what um, Kristen is in the background. She's going to be picking uh, a winner and you got to be here live to claim it. It's really cool. If nobody claims it, I'm taking it. I just want that on the record That's right now. That's not fair at all. <laughs> I yeah, know, but... I, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just He'll to settle be the fair. argument. Gotcha. Okay. Just yeah, to yeah. be fair. Okay. All right. All right. So stick around. All right. Question. First question. Andy, what are you hearing from Tailwind members and from other businesses? Because I know you're we're really keeping an eye on the situation. What are people worried yeah. about? What are they thinking? Yeah, I think we're seeing responses like the, uh, the whole spectrum of responses. Some people are actually doing well and feeling fine out of this whole thing. Uh, a lot of people are very concerned whether it's what's happening. And then there are the people who are in crisis and, and are just struggling day to day and seeing like you're sort of alluding to in the prize at the end, the, the company where... Uh, they're going to have to either pivot their company or, you know, their, their revenues sort of dried up overnight. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're seeing and hearing uh, uh, everything along those spectrum, and it's, uh, it's a strange new world we're living in. Yes. Yeah, so, um, yeah. you know, you mentioned that a lot of people are doing this. So what are, the, what are some of the categories, like, that people are falling into? Because you said you saw you're, you're seeing a different thing. So what are kind of the two different categories you're seeing? Yeah, I think there are people, uh, it's, if they're on the struggling side, I think they're sort of struggling in one of two ways. One is like that new world, what does my business look like in uh, sort of three months time, four months time? I'm I'm not Nostradamus, so I can't tell you when this thing will finish, but it's 
those who are seeing their business sort of struggling in the short term and wondering when it will come out of this and and what does their business look at like at that stage and then the other main bucket of people is like wh where am i how do i survive how do i get through this thing and i guess both of those are in a sort of slightly different category of how they might approach and you know the main topic of today around cost cutting or mm -hmm. uh, finding savings and and keeping the sort of the boat afloat as it were in the in the short mm -hmm. term and the medium term so like I, so i know you're you kind of you you do like the budget and all this the maths that I don't have, have any Excel does here. the math. Yeah. I just put the numbers in. Gotcha. <laughs> but you know you more about this. So what have you seen? What are some great ideas that you've seen uh, companies like implement? Like, and uh, what have you actually been doing for Tailwind to like, to, to actually cut down on expenses uh, internally for the company? Yeah, I think uh, so. We, uh, I think the the plan that's uh, set out and being shared is is a really great place to start. But I think realistically, I've I've spent the last two or three weeks going down our um, sort of list of vendors, listing them out. What's the name? How much mm -hmm. are they? Uh, how when's the next time we need to pay them? Um, and how much is that? And then I'm essentially putting them into three groups. So there's the must haves. Uh, the ads value, but need to review, and then there's the don't need, and we basically should, we, we don't need this thing, uh, and it's an oversight, or we need to do something about it. So, and like how I'm approaching those, just as a very high level, is like the must-haves, what can we do to save some money here? Um, how can we, uh, it comes down to uh, how many people are using the tool. We're, you know, we're a, a fairly sizable company in terms of how many people we're, you know, around mm -hmm. the 50-person mark. So, not everybody needs a license for everything. So it's simple things like that where we can sort of cut cut back as much as we can, um, but they're must-haves. We can't turn those off. They're the fundamentals of how we run our business. So it's it's more uh, damage limitation or, or trying to make sure we're making the most of those. Uh, the next category, I would say the ads value uh, is what we've been sort of talking about is they're the ones that if I turn them off, that's gonna, they're, they're driving value to our business. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, it could be a software, it could be um, a, a contractor or someone we're using um, around our marketing, around design and things like that. So they are things that if we took that away, it would have a long term impact on our business. We might not see it overnight, but it's something hmm. if you, you don't just cut away at that because it will impact your business at some point. Um, and so it's going through those. That's the most difficult bucket to sort of work your way through because there's a lot of, uh, you know, um, weighing things up against each other. And then the third bucket was very simple, um, quite a cathartic experience <laughs> in terms of just going through and, and switching off vendors. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it, there are things that we just didn't need to, to spend money on. And like, a lot of that was around again simple stuff around users but um do we need mm. 10 people with this license do we just need one person so some of them wasn't even it wasn't even just cancelling it but um it's reducing down to the minimum plan um what else it's duplication of uh we had three softwares that we use for running meetings mm. we had two for scheduling meetings so it's it's just a it's probably a, a, a good ex thing we should be doing. And I, I've now put this on my plan for every six months just to review our list mm. of vendors and try to uh, reduce or eliminate anything where we're duplicating. And we're a growing business with a lot of people um, and we use a lot of technology. So one software might be great now, but in six months' time, it kind of becomes obsolete because we need something bigger or has different functionality. Um, so for us, Um, some features one tool for today might not be the tool for tomorrow gotcha i know mm, i've done yeah. the same thing like i've gone through because those little even even in just not a not a big company but a smaller company is those subscriptions like you know even the nine nine oh, ninety nine a month yeah. things for different you know social media tools or whatever you know those can add up to a significant chunk if you do not go back and like like i loved your plan about going back every six months and i actually have it on my calendar to like to go double check or cancel this after a certain amount of time. So that's a, that's yeah. a great tip. Yeah. yeah I think and, if you uh, use another... that worksheet too, that you'll have that all listed out there. So the next time you go to do it, it'll be a lot easier. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that's the hardest thing in all of all to round up all of these things. I, I sign up for things and I forget, I forget to even have them. I'm not using them. Yeah. yeah I've got I think the other thing. I need to join. <laughs> 
just don't <laughs> auto renew. I think that's one thing as well you can do is like mm. uh, we have things that we pay for on an annual basis because we get a cheaper discount, but we know we won't need. So just mm -hmm. go in, go now, cancel it ahead of time for six months time, three months time, whenever it comes to an end. So you don't get hit with that auto renewal. Um, and it's again, it's part of this is a, uh, the sense of taking some control over it as well, um, feeling that you've done it, feeling that it's ticked off, actually made me feel better about the progress we're making um, on the cost side, mm -hmm. as much as the the amount that we've saved over the last sort of two or three weeks. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, and I think the other thing we've really been trying is these are at, at this stage uh, we're at the stage where we're cutting things that we don't need or are like not an indulgence, but uh, a just we don't need everyone to have. Uh, we've not sort of got in deep into the we're cutting services off or anything like that. So um, that's an, another sort of level of scrutiny that some of our users um, and people watching may need to sort of go their next stage deeper in terms of, OK, I'm going to I'm going to I have two things that I need to weigh up here and which one's going to drive the most value or, or give me the most ROI. So let's talk about some of those really, you know, real expenses that some some companies will have like let's talk about like office rent like what are some ideas that you know because that that could be a significant chunk for a lot of people if they have a physical location yeah so uh, depending on what sort of uh, contract you have it's definitely a, a lot of the answers for this are you need to go back to the contract and as horrible as that is you need to read through <laughs> the fine print and mm -hmm. and just see what your rights are in some of these things um, understanding like force majeure which is words I didn't even know until a few weeks ago um, <laughs> but essentially when chaos hits you can cancel a contract um, I, you have to be very careful around that and you know again this is about uh, not strangling your business in the medium term as well so you, you need to be very careful and sort of pick and choose what you do with those um, but from rent point of view um, I have friends with businesses who have a, a we work space mm -hmm. and it doesn't look like they're going to be in and back in there in the next two months so the advice I've given them is just cancel it go and pick up your stuff uh, they're right. going to have space when you come back to it. So give you 30 days notice. Um, the, the alternatives are asking for a discount. Um, if you're paying on a per seat basis or something like that, take it down to the minimum that you can in your contract in the short term. Um, and then I think for a lot of this as well, it's like just talking to um, whoever the contact you have is, your account manager, the person who owns the building, explaining your situation. Um, like I, I'm definitely of the opinion where you need to be very clear, very sort of transparent with these people. What is it that you're going through? What do you need and what do you want from this situation? Um, and ask them how they can help you. Um, because I, that's, that everyone understands everyone's going through a, a lot of trouble here. And, and we've definitely felt that from our vendors. Um, they've been really helpful, really sort of open and transparent. And the couple that, haven't been so helpful um i won't name uh but uh that will like that will pay off in the long term or it won't right. pay off in the long term so it's um mm -hmm. but from a rent specifically go back look at your contract see if you can reduce it if you can get out of it and uh you don't need that space for the next two or three months which it kind of feels like where we're going then doing that but even in the short term speak to them and see what they can do to to reduce rent in the short term Mm. That was good advice. So what, um, what about, um, and, you know, this is another one, that, like we'll talk about this in taxes, but insurance um, is one that I think mm. that a lot of people don't think about. So um, how should you, so if you're going home and you're moving to in-home, does that change? Do you need to get extra coverage? coverage? Does business insurance cover all that? So what are your thoughts on like insurance? Because I, I think it's Im important to uh, talk about that because I think, Insurance is something we, we don't talk about a lot of times when we're going through a crisis. We talk about it when it's over, like if there's a tornado or something, we want to get an insurance check. So, but what do we have what, during this time where it's kind of this weird thing that none of us have gone through before? How does insurance play into this? Can you hear me? I'm fr yeah. I think I froze. Yeah, you yeah, froze, yeah. but uh, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay, uh, so I think the things around insurance, I would say you definitely need to contact your broker um, or whoever's supplying your insurance for two reasons. One, update your address, like you say, just mm -hmm. so they know where you are. Um, that's really simple, easy email to whoever you know, um, if not call them. Uh, the second piece is 
ask them if there's anything within any of your policies that will protect you from this. So have you got loss of interest? Uh, in uh, loss of income built in anywhere have you got anything around your property um, insurance that would mean they can they can give you a refund or they can uh, sort of help cover some of your expenses there um, business continuity and things like that um, insurance generally used for sort of medium to bigger size companies so maybe not like most of our users would have that um, but that might be something to look into um, I would I, I would keep my insurance as uh, something that we can, I, I, that wouldn't be the thing that I cut away at um, gotcha. just because uh, it, the, the risk of that for the minimal cost, if you can keep that, especially around like uh, professional indemnity and stuff like that, the, the, mm. the downside of that is so bad that uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's definitely worth keeping if you can. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's not something I would look to cut away at. Um, gotcha. But yeah, again, talk to your broker. Can you move to a different vendor? Um, can they get you in with someone else and you need a discount? And they're no different. I would go back and say, I can't pay my, you know, if it is the case of you can't even afford your premium, then go back to them and see what they can do about a, a payment holiday. Um, can I uh, move my payments around? Can I uh, sort of slice off some of the coverage? Mm. Um, so rather than a, a $1 million coverage or a $150,000 coverage, I move it down to $50,000 just so you have some sort of um, safety net. But that will be very specific to what your business right. is and how and right. who you're dealing with on a customer basis. Gotcha. Okay. What about every, every freelancer and solopreneur's favorite topic of taxes? Oh, they're, they're not my favorite topic either. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I think uh, I'll, I'll skate through this really quickly because no one wants okay. to do this. Um, <laughs> no, but, but if yeah, there are ways I, to say we want to know. <laughs> yeah, I think the the deadline has uh, has been delayed. So the biggest thing is if you owe taxes, wait. And if you are mm -hmm. um, if you are owed money by the government or the state for your taxes. Get your claim in as soon as possible. You'll get your cash back within generally two, three weeks. Um, I don't know what the timelines are roughly with government and all of the other stuff they're working on, but the two levers you have there are like delay as long as possible and then in the short term, get the cash in while you can as well. Mm. So um, what if what are some of the most commonly overlooked deductions for taxes that maybe people are not taking advantage of? Yeah, I think the things that people, uh, and again, it's very difficult because we have so many different users, but just thinking about it, like running your finger down your credit card statement or um, around down your bank statement and going, did I use this for work? Is this, uh, did, you know, was this part of um, the, the company rather than my personal life? And, and going through those and then sitting down with your accountant or if you're doing like a, an online one, they have a lot of chat. Um, functionality in there now that someone can ask a specific or answer a specific question around. Mm. Um, I think now is the time if you haven't filed is probably the time that actually having a CPA is much better than not having one because they can sort of help you sort of get closer to the line as it were. Um, but I think anything around like your office space, if you work from home, can you take some of your mortgage or some of your rent um, and assign that as this square footage of my off, uh, home is my office and I work from there, therefore that can become a business expense. Um, there are things like that which people generally overlook, I think. Um, yeah, but I, I think just getting down to the nitty gritty of your bank statement and understanding what you spent money on is, is the stuff I Yeah, and you're probably doing that anyway as you're looking at, at what you're spending money on in other places. Yeah. So, okay, so let's talk about software. We've talked a little bit about that. Um, you mentioned how maybe we had extra licenses for people who aren't here anymore. Um, I know it's really hard to round up those expenses. So how did you track down what everything was, what we were paying, and how we knew if we needed all of that? Yeah, we have... Uh... A lot of it was just going in. I have a lot of logins to the system. So I'd imagine a lot of our users would also have logins or they have one central function. Uh, depending on how you're breaking up the work across like 
cost cutting if you're going to divide it up amongst uh, a few people or if you're a um, solopreneur and you're just doing it all yourself log into each one um, I basically set the list out um, and software was a big part of that so I, I can talk about the overall process a bit with that uh, yeah. line them up uh, you put them into your buckets I started with the cancels first because it felt mm. like I'd got somewhere and I'd saved money straight away. Um, yeah. And like I say, it was kind of cathartic in, in just like, oh, I've achieved something, tick. Uh, the mm -hmm. next bucket was like, I, I went in, I opened up five windows in uh, Google Chrome, uh, went to the website, opened up their chat function and started talking to them. Um, and like it was uh, trying to be transparent with them. We're struggling um, in terms of like, uh, we're looking for ways to save costs for our business. The future looks uh, challenging for everyone and we're no different to everyone else. So uh, what can you do to help? How can I um, sort of save money for our company? And I wasn't trying just go in and say, can you give me a discount? That wasn't the approach right. I was taking. It's, I think if you go in, you, you're very clear about like, I just need to save money. It could be we've got the plan that we don't need or we're paying for usage that we don't need in our plan. Can we reduce that, change that? Um, that's the starting point, but you can attack four or five different um, users at the same time in different windows. You just get the annoying bings from the chat functions. <laughs> right. uh, yeah, uh, but you're, you're constantly moving uh, between the different windows. But I, I found that much easier um, being clear and direct with them and actually having a conversation rather than, you know, just going in, finding the cancel page and canceling it, um, unless that was really sort of just what we needed to do. But pulling out a list of users, um, checking who they are. Look, first thing was looking for people who'd left. Uh, then it was looking for people, you know, if we have a marketing team, we have lots of users from a different team in the business. Do, does everyone in that team really need it? Um, so it, just looking at those, those kinds of ways um, was like the first point of attack. Gotcha. Yeah. So one of the things that uh, we probably should have started with this, <laughs> actually, but so, so some of us, and, and I can count myself as one of them, you know, as business owners are, are sometimes really uncomfortable uh, talking about money. So can you help us get over that a little bit? I mean, I, I know that's what you do every day, but, you know, for us mere mortals, um, what can we do? <laughs> it feels do? very awkward, yeah. Yeah, it just feels weird <laughs> to talk about money. So how can we get over that? Yeah, I, th uh, I think the chat, so I think talking to someone, uh, nine times out of 10, you're going to get a better response and a better outcome than just sending emails. Um, it's quicker, it's easier. So I think chat functions are definitely the, the easiest way to avoid the awkwardness of actually having that mm -hmm. conversation. Right. Um, but I think going in with a, a plan around uh, what situation you're in, um, why you're doing it, being transparent and clear with them about that and saying, I'm trying to save money because of these reasons and I'm trying to achieve this goal. So that could be, I need to get 50% off. I need to save this amount of dollars and putting that out for them um, and just saying, this is what I need from this. You can almost cut and paste that from a, a doc and just put that into each of the chat windows. Um, because realistically, uh, they, they are there trying to help. Um, so if, if you're on the software side or something online, there's definitely that. I think the uh, if you're doing a sort of in-person where you're talking with a, a contractor or someone who's done work with you, I think it's a very similar approach, but um, probably over the phone is the easiest thing or a, a, you know, a video call and just... Mm. Uh, Writing out what, again, I would just start with that, like that opening gambit of this is what I'm trying to achieve. This is the money I need to save and this is why. And remembering the why. The why is really important um, because it's, you know, like it could be keeping your business afloat. It could be um, things for your family or your livelihood and all of those things mm -hmm. up to, you know, like helping people in the communities. So like the, the why is very important to communicate at that stage. Um, and I feel like a lot of the uh, people we've spoken to or I've spoken to have been very receptive to that understanding. They've, you know, everyone's in this kind of together. Um, and so it seems to be going up the chain in terms of discounts come from certain vendors that then are getting passed down um, or sort of helping those in need. Um, yeah, so I think that's pretty much it from a, a sort of the getting over it is like preparation, 
having that conversation and saying, this is what I need, waiting for them to respond. Um, and I feel that this time a lot of people are responding in a proactive and uh, sort of friendly, sort of polite way at least, um, and they're looking for a way to help you. Uh, but also thinking about the ways that you can reduce cost without just going, I need a discount, knowing those levers. So is it taking users out? Is it uh, delaying payment? Mm -hmm. Is it, uh, can I move to the annual uh, contract um, rather than the monthly one? Because cash isn't a problem, but business and underlying cost is a problem. Um, you, there's sort of two ways to approach this and two buckets of people where they may be just, I need to delay my payment, but I need this service for the next three months. Can you help me? Mm -hmm. Or... I need to sort of cut the cost base of my business over the next year. Can you help me cut this cost and how can I do that? Um, right. and, and, and knowing those levers. So um, I'm going to take less people off of this. We're going to serve, we're going to send less emails out. You know, gotcha. that's a very simple way that you have control over. And it's like, I'm going to be a bit more sort of direct with, I'm only sending them to this group of people rather than everyone in my database, that kind of thing. So is it, so it sounds like there's a lot of, I'm almost like bartering going on. So is it cool to barter? I mean, I mean, is because I mean, a lot of us aren't used to doing that now. And now it's like, we're going and we're not hustling, but we're like, Hey, can, you know, can we do this? I mean, um, I, I mean, I guess, I mean, I have clients who've asked me for that. And so I've had to barter with them. So I guess it can be the opposite way as well. Yeah, I think so. I think uh, a lot of our users will uh, be at the potentially at the bottom of the chain, so they're mm -hmm. bartering up. There could be people who are in the middle of the chain who are being bartered by their users or their customers, but also are bartering up the chain to their suppliers. Um, I, I think it's it's uh, this is yeah, it's fair game. Um, but gotcha. uh, again, I think it comes back to being uh, open and transparent about what you need and why you need it. Um, like. Every conversation I've had with any one of our vendor, I've made it clear why. I'm not price gouging. I'm not here to sort of just ask you for, to give us a discount because COVID's all over the news. Right. I, I, I'm trying to uh, sort of uh, reduce costs. Um, and here are the ways I can see to reduce costs. Um, maybe you can help me. Maybe there are things in our plan that you can see that, we shouldn't be using or we're not taking advantage of and maybe could be driving more revenue rather for the same amount of cost and we're not sort of making uh, sort of the best use of. Yeah. So I think, um, but from a, some of this is like, you just need to, like I would say, write out a plan, have that conversation, be direct. Um, I think if you're into like negotiating 101, some of that stuff comes down to like, yeah, some of this is, is weighing up different users and different vendors. So mm -hmm. if we're using this uh, uh, software to do with um, video conferencing, actually, I'm going to look at three others or two others. Don't spend more than an hour, like 10 minutes, 20 minutes looking at them. Just mm -hmm. go, like, if I was going to move, you can name drop those as a partner. You could name drop those as someone that you could move to. Uh, understand what the price differential is. And some of this stuff you might be giving up quality of service. You might be giving up quality of, uh, you know, video conferencing skills uh, right. or the, 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 what the service that you receive, but it's better than having nothing and saving that $10, $50 could definitely be sort of beneficial. Um, so going in with a plan and I, again, I, I think people are expecting it as well. And if you're dealing with a salesperson or a, an independent contractor, again, you're not gouging them. If you are gouging them, then, <laughs> that's 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 no. just something that I, yeah uh, don't don't do it because right. this thing will end and people remember these things won't yeah these things won't be forgotten and doing it at a time like this uh, will be even worse um, so remember at all times protect that relationship um, and you could be helping them out as well like you could be right. at the top of the chain and you have a contract and you're like they need some work I'm gonna buy hours off them at a reduced rate so they get money. I get to work over my um, and I'm paying now. I'm helping them out and I'm winning in the long run as well. But it's all about that and it's very cliche and uh, but looking for the win-win for both people. Right. It's, it is cliche. It's horrible, but it, it's true. If you're looking for <laughs> just the, true. if you're looking yeah. for, a, yeah, if you're looking for a win for yourself or for your, uh, it, I, I, I feel like karma will come back and bite you at some point. 
Right, exactly. <laughs> so I want to go back, though, to something that you said, because um, I thought that was really smart. I just want to make sure everybody heard it. Um, where you, I think you were talking about software in particular, but I think it applies equally to service providers. Um, let's say that you, ha you have a set rate that you're paying every month and you're getting these deliverables. Well, maybe you're not using all those deliverables, or maybe they're not the right ones for you now. Maybe you don't change the, uh, the m amount you're paying, but maybe you change what you're getting so that it's more effective. You know, same amount of work for the provider, same amount of money for you, but better outcome. Um, just being really careful not to cut anything that's going to uh, impact your revenue or take more time for you. I think that's where I would be really uh, reluctant to cut, <laughs> cut anything, but I, I do love that idea of look at what you're getting could you be getting something different for the same amount of money? Yeah. And we had a, a, one of our vendors who provides marketing software who we were paying for a, a, we were in a tier where we were at the very bottom of the tier. And we've been paying basically a, a, about 500 extra dollars every month because we were at the bottom end of the tier and paying up to the next one. And they built a new pricing tier for us as part of this. And now oh. we're, we feel like we're right size. They're, they're not doing any extra work. Um, and that's probably going to benefit some of the other customers as well. Um, so mm -hmm. like they're actually been very receptive to that. So there are things that you can do where you, you both walk out with this as a, a you know, you both walk out happy um, and that, you know, it, it helps them as well on their business side. Yeah. Okay. This is a lot. I mean, I, I know <laughs> the, the, the money saving potential is there because I've seen what, what you're doing. Um, and, and I know we're maintaining the, maintaining those important relationships with people at the same time. But what if what if I don't have an Andy? Uh, <laughs> are there ways that a normal person? I'm sorry. I mean, a regular person <laughs> can do this to make it. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think that's so. Why I had to had to backtrack a little bit. Yeah. Um, are there ways we can make this less painful? Well, I think after three weeks living at home, my wife would be quite happy to rent me out for a couple of weeks. So, uh, but, um, yeah, no, another I think, revenue uh, stream. Yeah, exactly. Uh, no, I think uh, the if you don't have someone who does your finances, uh, I think the the get back to basics. So, if you there's like Clarity Money, Min, one of those things, run your bank statement through them. Look at where you're spending your money. Because uh, if you can't, it's a, a horrible accounting thing from back in college. But, you know, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. So if you don't know what the problem is, you, you, you're just not going to know. And that's why writing this down in the, in the documents that we're sharing is really helpful and useful because it's, uh, yeah, it, it hits home when you know what you're spending. But I know like on Clarity Money, I use that for my personal things. And it has a, like a, I call it the honesty button where you click on it. It's like, how much have you spent with Amazon? in the last month or okay. three months. No. And then it blows your, <laughs> no. <laughs> it blows no. your mind. It blows your mind. Um, yeah. yeah. So running through those, checking and uh, just knowing what the reality is and that will um, sort of shine some light. I think when you're going through this, be methodical and persistent. Um, like you've got your list, work off the list, set yourself a deadline and a timeline of when you're going to get this done by. Pick off two or three a day, five a day, one a day, whatever it is. Um, and make sure you achieve those um, start with the biggest first um, or like the cancellations are really sort of like I say really nice and cathartic so get those out of the way start with the biggest or where you see the biggest chance of saving some money um, start with those and then work your way down um, and then block out like time in your diary uh, I, oh, yeah. well, I can't remember whether I meant to say schedule or schedule so uh, I said them both <laughs> But, uh, yeah, uh, block out some time, make sure you really dedicate some time to this because uh, you're not even going to save, you, you shut something off, that's $10, but that's $10 for the next six months, that's $60. Mm -hmm. It does pay off um, and look for the discounts on the annuals. If, you're, mm -hmm. if you know this is a tool you're definitely going to be used, shift across to the annual plan if you have the cash because 10, 15, 20% across the market is generally uh, um, the sort of the, the market the, uh, discount that you'll see. Um, and then the last one is like, uh, beware of false economies. Mm. So if you're cutting stuff uh, or you're turning stuff off, uh, remember that you bought that for a reason. So just do that cut check. Do I really need this? Am I, 
uh, I, I have Expensify. $5 a month allows me to forward all of our invoices for the company and it stores them in one place. Uh, I could shut that off, but the $5 and then having to do all right. that work myself is well spent. So the, beware of false economies. So yeah, the time, the time uh, saving would outweigh that. So, um, so w this is probably just as important. What mistakes have you seen that we could, you know, easily avoid? Because I know uh, you've kind of, you've been in this realm for so long, but um, what can, what are some uh, mistakes that you see a lot of companies do that they really shouldn't do? Yeah, I think uh, around marketing specifically, it's usually what people see as contingent spend, um, something that's uh, maybe a nice to have, they think. Um, but uh, that's a false economy in my eyes. You may scale mm -hmm. it back. But um, at the moment, like AdWords, Facebook ads, are like they have much more inventory because people are at home looking on their computers. Um, prices are suppressed because there's less people buying in the market. So you can probably do the same amount of advertising. Um, I think I read something that they're like 35, 40% down in terms of price. Mm -hmm. So pulling all of your marketing dollars out, unless you have to, I wouldn't, um, and keep some money in the market. It might be a good way of catching up or actually even sort of growing in terms of AdWord and where you search uh, sit in SEO. Um, so that's mm -hmm. definitely one thing. Um, and then just stopping marketing altogether. Um, I feel like even if you're doing something for free in a, a free channel like TikTok or Snapchat or, uh, you know, Instagram is, is free also from, mm -hmm. uh, you know, sort of uh, just posting yourself. Staying in market, uh, staying front of mind, uh, giving out free content, uh, like all of those things help because at the end of this thing, people will remember you. Um, and if you have time on your hands, that's definitely something I would uh, uh, would stay on top of. So like I think one of the, the biggest things people pull out of marketing, uh, just don't. It, gotcha. it, do what you can, definitely do what you can, whether it's free or uh, paid. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah, and you didn't men mention Pinterest, but that is one of the greatest free drivers of traffic out there, and it's having a moment. <laughs> so have you seen yes. advertising go down in that, Elisa? Sorry, random question, but is, is have you seen the um, Pinterest ads drop a little bit? Not necessarily, but I haven't been looking that closely, to be okay. honest with you. I just you. was wondering if it's yeah. across the board or not. Yeah. So. I, I wouldn't be surprised just because of uh, engagement and activity is so high that there's probably more opportunity and gotcha. yeah, you know, lower prices. Yeah. So, all right. I imagine Andy, people are coming to you with questions and you probably, I'm wondering what's the one piece of advice you find yourself giving over and over and over again? Yeah, I think, uh, speak to your bank, um, mm. whatever oh, okay. situation you're in, uh, speak mm. to your bank, know who your account manager is. Um, mm -hmm. there's all of the government stuff in terms of the PPP and the loans and things like that they're going to be your first port of, uh, point of contact for those. Um, having a local bank has definitely, like across all the people I've spoken to, has been much, much easier to work with and much more engaged and helpful. If you're with one of the bigs, then uh, people have struggled to get some support from them. So telling them what yeah. your situation is, what can they do to help? Um, because that's, they're definitely the people with the money um, who yeah, can right. help you get through a bad time. Um, yeah, they may be able maybe to. Maybe your mortgage, you know. yeah. Mm. Exactly, exactly. Very good. So speaking about that, so um, so let's say we talked to our bank, but we still need the cashola. So how can we find some more money? Do you have like some, I mean, not just look, and we've been at home for a while, so we've gone through all our couch cushions by now. Yeah, so yeah that's right. What, what the are some other ways? Our piggy banks are broken. Yes, our piggy bank, you know. Oh, we're robbing everything. So um, what are some ideas to get, to get some money? Yeah, so I think uh, just if we're going to talk about the government schemes, there, there are a few out there. But um, again, speaking around the specifics, go to your sort of bank account manager. Um, but there's the payroll protection uh, mm -hmm. plan, which is essentially uh, uh, the government scheme to keep people in work over the next eight weeks. Um, so you put an application in, they will give you a, a loan um, and that loan may be forgone if you hit criteria about uh, keeping your payroll at certain levels. So it can be Is that different for the company. SBA, Andy? Um, yeah, that's through them, yes. Um, okay. But it will be administered through your uh, through a bank. Um, so oh, again, go okay. yeah. That, so we've actually, we had to just submit it to our bank who then went off and applied for us 
um, and then we supply the information through them. So um, that's probably the easiest way to manage it. Um, but that can be, uh, you know, anywhere between zero and $10 million a company. It's two and a half times your average payroll. So if your payroll is 100000 um, over the last 12 months, then you can get up to $250,000 um, as a loan. Very low interest rate. You may have to pay it back, but if you keep everyone in work and keep your um, salary levels at a certain level, uh, there's uh, some of that or all of that could be foregone. So definitely go straight to your bank uh, account manager and, and speak to them and say, how do I get my hands on some of this money? Mm. Um, if, if not, there's some short-term ones around like the EIDL, E-I-D-L. Um, I actually have to check the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, um, right. which uh, again is similar criteria, um, but is more about a bridging loan and giving you some cash in the short term. Um, and the express loans as well from the SBA, which are like, they're either between ten twenty five thousand dollars $25,000 that can be, sort of very quickly put in your hands as a business to keep you in business with payroll, uh, employing people uh, that come with different criteria. And again, some of those are, are, are foregone. So looking into those, uh, the reason I say go to your account, uh, your bank person, that they've, they can cut through all of the, I don't have to read through the legislation, I don't have to understand. They just tell you the form to fill in, the information you need to provide, and they help you with it, um, which nice. no one wants to read through legislation. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it doesn't make sense. It's not written in English. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah, I have to say I read through some of this in preparing these questions, and I, I wish I had just said call your bank. <laughs> right. Yeah, like it's, uh, it, and they, it's they, they're terrible. set up for it. Um, and yeah. the, uh, the other thing I would say is if you ring your first bank and I, I won't name names, but like some of the larger banks, if you've got like a well-known bank, they may have hit their limit with the government, which means they're not accepting any mm -hmm. more loans. That doesn't mean there's not money out there. So go to a smaller mm -hmm. local bank. Um, I will do a shout. Uh, we, uh, bank of Oklahoma have been very helpful with us. Um, so like they've been really great. Um, so from start to finish, but like if you've got a smaller local bank that can do this, knows how to do this, go straight to them. They'll help you set up an account and you may get a better uh, banking relationship out of this at the end as well. So let's say you're not a, so I know people look at Tailwind and like, oh, there's a big company, da, da, da. but this is also, I want to make sure it's clear. It's even for small, small businesses, like with one person or two, you know, like that too as well. Yeah, definitely, definitely. There are different criteria uh, based on what type of company, whether you're a corporation or not. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, uh, it's pretty much the same information that you need to collect. It's all about payroll. Um, like the three things are basically how much was your payroll last year or in the last sort of few months if you're a cyclical business. Mm -hmm. um, each person caps out about $100,000 in terms of what you can put into the pot for them. And then you get two and a half times that average salary over there so gotcha. two and a half months worth it's gotcha. uh yeah it it's uh it's been really really useful and uh the the bank have been really helpful gotcha great so let's just um we kind of covered this in in the cutting cost but let's talk about service providers so i know that many listening are service providers who also work with other service providers so what are some ways to kind of make that work out for everybody yeah, I think uh, prepaying, um, if depending on where you are in the relationship, um, either offering discounts for prepaid hours um, or asking for those in advance so that you can get a deal and reduce costs, um, that's definitely one thing. Um, I think uh, another thing which we didn't sort of t touch on earlier is like going and back through your invoices that you've sent mm. out and haven't been paid on um, yeah. is a really quick and easy way to get some more cash in the door. Um, so just double checking on those, making sure you're all squared away on that as well. Um, but yeah, I think uh, speaking to them, how can I help you? Uh, also, if you have work that you just have to have done um, and you know you need design work or something like that that you have to speak to someone about and have to get that mm -hmm. done. I think just asking them, how can I make this cheaper? And it doesn't mean you're asking for a discount. It means like if it's a video, can I take the animation away? If it's mm -hmm. uh, you know, can I change them? Can I shorten it by ten seconds? Uh, which is then going to mean it's X percent off the cost. So just understanding those levers so you can make that sort of informed decision on how do I get this back down to the price point. 
Um, yeah. And then also, can I pay in advance? Um, can I defer payment if I need it? Um, and that might come with a price up or price down, depending on what side of the relationship you're on. Um, and then, uh, yeah, just I, I keep coming back to it. Um, just do things the right way and right. know that there's a relationship at the end of this that you want to protect and, and look after because it, the world's a small place, so it's definitely worth um, uh, paying forwards in these situations. I think it's a great point because, you know, you see a lot of people online who are, you can tell are being very op- opportunistic, but you can also see the ones out there who are, they're still making money, but they are, um, they're being helpful in trying to make it available for more people. By, uh, for example, I have a fr- of some friends who they have a, a course about live video and they do all this stuff. Well, they have dropped it to uh, pay what you want at a minimum of $20 to get in their, their beginning course, which I think is a way of giving back to the community. But they also have to keep the lights on. And, but they're doing it in a way that is very, very uh, giving and transparent. So I think that's a great model. And you mentioned that is it's all about the relationship because people will remember when this is all over. Yeah. And you can also use this as a, from a marketing standpoint, like top of funnel. Mm-hmm. Right. It's, this is a way of going, I'm going to give stuff away for free. They may not be my normal customer base, but I can get their information, their details, and there's someone I can market to. If they're showing an interest now, they might show an interest in three months' time. They may even convert to a paid customer because our product is the right product for them and we are solving their new, we could be solving someone's new problem um, or we could be solving the problem that they've always had. So um, mm-hmm. from a marketing point of view, this this is an opportunity for certain businesses and the other thing is don't apologize for making money, just, just do things in the right way, don't mm-hmm. gouge people. Um, like it, there's, a, there's a way of doing business and it's, do it, do it the right way. Good points. Very good. All right. Do we have questions for Andy? We want to go to questions now. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, so we um, have we have our our other guest coming on in just a few minutes. Yeah. So I wanted to pull up. There, I mean, we have some great people in the comments. Um, so uh, there's people still doing Tailwind tips. But Laura, who is a friend of the show, she's always here. She goes, if you're not in the U.S., Google uh, your country, province, state. Uh, and COVID-19, and you can navigate to local resources, also local chambers of commerce, BIAs, small business associations. They all have great resources. So um, I thought that was a great Thanks, one. Laura. And then also Jill goes, uh, Tailwind Tip, everyone needs us to keep the lights on, create a win-win as many times as possible. So, um, yeah. yeah, a lot of great comments, a lot of good stuff going on um, in the in the comments here. I don't see too many questions, but a lot of people are um, – are really th- this is what I love about our community is they're helping each other out inside of the comments. So uh, very very awesome about the local. I, I do businesses. have. Uh, yeah. I have one last question for Andy. It's very important. Oh okay. What are okay, you binge good. watching? Yeah. What are you binge oh. watching? Uh, so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Again, to my wife's chagrin, uh, James Bond, every James Bond has oh. been dropped onto Amazon Prime. So I'm <laughs> slowly working my way through those in order. Um, and I'm finding myself down some random YouTube rabbit holes where nice. I'm, I'm watching old football, like soccer football games for me. Right. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, like the top 10 goals of this person and the top 10 things of this. Uh, it's I, I'm. I'm almost over Netflix because we spend more time searching through it than actually watching anything on it at the moment. <laughs> that, is, so, that, is, <laughs> that is so true. Yeah. It's like nothing is on. Listen, I remember we yeah. had three channels, so we got all yeah. sorts of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That wasn't long ago in the UK either. Yeah, so we're <laughs> Elise and I remember those days. So, yeah. Andy, thank you so much for all these great tips. There have been some yeah, the questions that we're getting a lot. Is this going to be available as a replay? Yes, it is. Uh, you can watch it anytime you want here on Facebook and on YouTube. And uh, also, uh, there will be some more resources coming out out of this. But make sure uh, that you grab this great um, this great resource uh, at bit.ly tw survive and thrive. That's bit.ly forward slash tw survive and thrive. Andy, thank you so much. It was awesome. Thank you. All thank right. you. Appreciate it. Talk to you guys later. See ya. See ya. All right, got to switch oh, cameras. There we Jeff, go. I want to I want to yes. mention that that TW Survive and Thrive will have all this whole series, all the recordings will be up there as well. Right. And if you if you just can't wait, you could there they are on YouTube. We're streaming it live there yep. as well. Uh, right. I want to <laughs> uh uh, I think it's Di says, uh, oh my gosh, so true about Netflix. <laughs> she has reached the end of Netflix. 
So, uh, I'm yeah, so sorry. very, very yeah. cool. So I'm going to pull up some uh, while we're waiting for our next guest to come on. Um, okay. Let me see. Oh, here's a great one from Kimberly. She goes, um, let's see. She goes, another uh, way to find money is to search your name and business in the state unclaimed property databases. Make sure it's a government Ooh. site. You may find money that you never knew about. I think I saw money from when I worked like two days at Target when I was in college. <laughs> there may still be some money there. Hopefully it's been an earned earn entrance. Um, oh, boy. So, and yeah. then uh, uh, Michelle, she had a great takeaway as well. She goes, uh, tip, don't cancel things just to cancel them. The small mm. amount may be worth it. Think big picture. Yeah. So this, yeah. I thought that was, and, um, and he kept going back to that. It's like really think about, you know, what you can trim, but also your long-term prospects so um yeah so um yeah and so oh ashley says um yeah i found some money that way so that's very cool that she must have been that those databases that uh, found money databases that's really really cool i never th I that is a great tip to try to find some so i never uh, trusted those but that's really cool to well know there's that. government ones so i think you can go and, and, and find that so i'm still not okay. seeing our guest coming on so uh okay we will, well i can set him up and if he isn't yeah. able to get so I'll in. keep I going can, through uh, um, some of these. Um, <laughs> Lorena goes Bond, get? James Bond. Yes, so uh, very very funny that uh, <laughs> I watched those with my dad, and I you know we won't go into who the best James Bond guy, but it is Sean Connery. Oh, I um, <laughs> let's see, let's see <laughs> yeah. who else. Uh, Jill also says, um, "Don't apologize for making money." Do and and yeah. other people say, "Do it the right way." I think that's yeah. a great that's a great one as well. So, um, cause you guys are all wonderful. Yes. And you know, do, 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 do uh, every one of us needs to keep the lights on. This is from Jill again, uh, create a win, win as many times as possible. Shelly yeah. also says respect relationships. And Andy did keep uh, talking to us about that. Um, very important to, uh, people are going to remember, I mean, there's companies that were formed, you know, they, they're talking about right now is like a lot of the big companies, I think Facebook and was it YouTube and some others well, were actually Uber. formed. Uber, we're like Uber from the, the reception, from the last recession. So, yeah, there's people remember companies that do a good job and have great customer service. So, yeah, yeah. So I wanted to talk about a company that made a really smart pivot, um, and I'm not sure if he's going to be able to come on or not. Um, yeah, but, I haven't seen him here yet. So, okay. So I got an email last week, and the the subject line was "Send your team a work from home kit." And it just, I, it caught my attention because I hadn't seen anything like that. And I know it caught Jordan's attention on our team as well. So I opened it up and it's um, from swag.com and they typically produce uh, swag for live events. So, you know, your pencils, your chargers, all those little things that you pick up at, um, at conferences. It's so fun. Uh, but no one's buying that right now, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So, so what they did is they created this work from home kit, um, and I'm gonna drop a link to it in here right. because I just thought it was so super smart. Um, and they sell typically they sell in bulk. Um, so obviously, if you have a company and your all your employees are work from home, mm -hmm. you would send them this cool little kit. I don't know why this is not working. Hold on. <clears throat> you broke the internet is what happened, Elisa. So I do want to, while you're getting that ready, I do want to pull up this because yeah. I totally agree. Lisa says definitely Sean Connery. I think the next would be Daniel Craig. Yes. <laughs> very important that we had that uh, comment there because that yes. is very true. Um, okay. So uh, An Angel says this um, while you're still trying to pull this no, up. She go okay. She goes, um, also detox all your digital money apps to see if you can use some of them to redeem. For example, uh, for drop app, I can use it for Amazon and to buy groceries. I was saving it for an airline gift card, but groceries are more relevant now. That is a great <laughs> tip, Angel. Thank you. Um, so. Is anyone else spending about twice as much as usual on groceries? Yeah, especially if you get them delivered, it's more. Um, it I've noticed that too. But for me, because, uh, and I, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say this, make sure that you tip those people who are doing that very, oh, yeah. very handsomely. That's why it's more expensive than me because those people, I mean, my wife has a, she has a, gets pneumonia really easily. So we are locked down really hard. And so delivery, because I don't want to go out and risk being exposed, I, I pay a lot extra. Uh, and I tip those people because I think they are, they're, some of them are really risking themselves for us. 
So make sure that you compensate them accordingly. I uh, just want to throw that out there. Sorry. Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. I do the same thing. My, my yeah, mother mom. lives yeah. in yeah, yeah. part of my house and she's uh, very immunocompromised. So we do the same thing. So, yeah. So, so it looks like he's going to, he's going to come on. So the, what they're doing. Okay. So they've got this work from home kit, which you can have branded. Um, and the one that we are giving away is the starter kit and it's so cute. I put, I dropped the link in there, but. Oh, so that's it, the surprise. That's the surprise. Yes. Kristen is in the comments and choosing a winner and she is going to send that to me when, Oh, here. Oh, have we got one? Okay. We have a winner. Awesome. If you're here, Heather, Margaret, Richie, show yourself. <laughs> <laughs> because you I have one one of the is, balloons. Yeah. I know. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Yes. Yes. Heather. So she won. So what did she Heather, win? Margaret, so she, what is in what is in okay. this kit? In this kit is um a hot mess apron. <laughs> you need one of those. I oh I do need one of those because the one I have right now is covered in paint. Mm -hmm. Um hot pads, so like um oven what do you call those oven things? mitts it's not a mitt though it's a um, uh, pot holder it's a pot holder which is a, uh, a cool okay. little pen a steel mug assorted snacks because come on snacks are everything right now mm -hmm. um and a tech taco which well, i feel like i have oh i do have one of those yes oh yeah the, the actual tail one ones no it, it's um it's not going to be branded because it's just like a, a sample because normally mm -hmm. you would buy a whole bunch of them. But I just thought they were so cute and I really, really wanted one. So is Heather here <laughs> because you said that they had to be here to win? Yeah, they have to be here to win. And so I don't see I her popping to, up yet. So I need you to pop up. We okay, could have no somebody Heather? else. Okay, we have a second option in Michelle Hall. Michelle, are you here? If you're Jeff here... Looking. You You're win. Here. If not, you Say go something. away brokenhearted. Say something. I know. It's like not getting picked up to dance. <laughs> I know. It's Happened very sad. I hope you missed so, your opportunity. Yeah. So the reason why this we're doing this um, is because this company saw, and I imagine had a little bit of a panic, right, as all these um, in-person events are being canceled and, mm -hmm. and their orders probably being canceled and it just isn't something people need right now right. um they they saw a trend and they jumped on it and it was smart it is smart yeah so let me tell a story another one that i i interviewed a lady who does uh her name's ali bloyd and she does actually um facebook uh, and and local stuff and she was telling some great you know stories of people who have pivoted and one of my favorite ones she talked about was um she talked about this uh it's florist we always do florists here. I don't know why, but we, we always go there. But she had this huge uh, order for this wedding or this big event that was canceled because, I mean, everything going on. She, all these flowers. And she's like, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do with all these flowers? And what she did is she actually bundled them together in bouquets and sold them individually for people and then would drop them off for people. And she sold out in two days and made more money than she did on the event. So oh, was she was smart. super smart, pivoted really quickly, and uh, I'm seeing that with restaurants. I'm seeing uh, a lot of people who are being very, very creative in their, um, their, their serving the community, especially if they're local and doing some things that way. So uh, this, this company that you mentioned as well, I think it's just super smart and a way to, yeah, yeah take a deep breath, okay. you know, cry for 15 to 30 <laughs> minutes and then, right. okay, what can I do now? Figure it out. What's Figure different? it out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, Jeremy is in the green room, he says. I don't see him at all. Uh, I think he's there because he sent me a screenshot. Well, I can, I can, let me go. So okay. I'm still getting and this. See, I, think even, I see Andy um, frozen. Oh, no. Yeah, Jeremy's so, in there. Um, but we me, have even better news. Michelle is here. Michelle Hall has won the work from home kit. Michelle, I want to know, are you working from home? <laughs> and what are you going to do with the hot mess apron? Are you cooking anything cool that you found on Pinterest? Mm. Hmm. Okay. So Michelle is here. I don't know if we're going to be able to get. Yeah. I'm, uh, let me go over here. I'm trying. I'm still seeing. 
Um, okay. Yeah, I can't bring him on. I'm still seeing old Andy. Okay. So, sorry. An old Andy. <laughs> okay. So, um, I will from now on and forever highly respect swag.com for this clever little pivot that they made. And they have some really cool stuff too. So, I mean, obviously it's, there's minimum quantities here, but, um, you know, love it. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to send that out to you, Michelle, and you can brand it any way you want to love to know what you're doing at home. Um, and that's, uh, Oh, that, perfect for you. Yeah. What? Christmas cookies? Are you going to freeze those? That's awesome. I wouldn't. And that sounds really good. So. <laughs> I know. I'm getting a little hungry. So right we're going to, so tell them the schedule for this, Elisa. So we're doing this, we've kind of changed things up. So tell them what we're going to be doing. Uh, yes. Yeah, so we are doing um, the Survive and Thrive series, which is designed to help your business to, um, oh, Jeremy's in the chat, uh, to, to survive some difficult times that may or may not be coming, oh, especially depending on your industry, um, and also to help you set yourself up for success in the future. So we'll be trying to do one of these on every Tuesday. Uh, this week we have two. In fact, on Thursday we have one with Holly Homer talking about how Facebook marketers especially can take advantage of the record-breaking engagement that's going on on Pinterest right now. So mm -hmm. hope you show up for that. But just for a moment here, we have Jeremy Parker from Swag.com. Hi, so sorry, so sorry about all the technical challenges. Apologize. No, no you're problem. good. No problem. I'm glad you could make it. Thank you so much yeah. for having me. So, so before you came on, I kind of was singing your praises because uh, I got this email and I it really caught my attention. I thought, who are these people and why are they so smart? So, so tell me where this idea for this work from home kit came from. Sure, sure thing. So a little bit about swag.com. We are the best place to help companies buy quality promotional products that you actually want to keep. We work with over 4,000 companies from Facebook and Google and Amazon and all the big players and also small startups. And obviously yeah. everyone is facing challenges right now with this pandemic. Everyone's working from home. Everyone feels really super disconnected. And we were getting a lot of our buyers reaching out to us and asking, you know, our company culture is being hurt because no one's in the office. Is there a way that we could oh. kind of connect Team together. So we were trying to think of what can we do that really help the situation and keep people connected, yeah. get company culture thriving even when no one's in the office. So we came up with these work from home kits. Mm -hmm. The challenge in general is that a lot of suppliers are closed. One product might be out of stock, oh. one pro product. Mm -hmm. So we had to really figure out which products do we know for a fact that will never run out of stock that we <laughs> can make sure that done in really quick turnaround. People don't want to wait 20 days for get products delivered. Okay. Right now through our platform, you can buy swag in a matter of seconds. We will have the products produced and shipped out to all your individual employees within 10 days. Nice. Makes the entire process really quick. Ooh, that's that's awesome. very cool. Yeah, so Michelle um, is in our audience, and Michelle Hall has, has won the sample work from home kit. Um, so I, I really love that it was kind of your – it was your customers who gave you the idea. So if you yeah. if you can get some feedback from your customers right now, find out what they need and how you can help them. And man, what a great idea. Yeah, I think our whole entire business is really learning from our customers, figuring out what they need and trying to make the process as easy as possible for them. Um, I think yeah. every business should do that. You know, really learn from your customers. Sure. That's the best way to do it. Yeah. So did you have them calling in or did you have were people calling to talk to them? How did you get that communication started? Um, a lot of it was us actually outreaching to customers and trying oh. to say, you know, we're here for you. How can we help you? You know, what would you love to have that you just don't have right now? And yeah. enough people individually, independently, were giving us advice of what they would love. And it was kind of our mm. duty, and it's our job to to make the, our our customers' lives a lot easier. So it's really just yeah. about us trying to figure out how we can solve their problems. That's love awesome. that. So where are you okay. guys located at? Um, we're, so uh, we're located in New York City, our corporate office, but we ship uh, worldwide, internationally, and we have different manufacturers all throughout the U.S. Gotcha. 
Mm-hmm. Well, this is awesome. Okay. I, I can't wait. To, um, I, you know, I'm excited to, to for our winner, for Michelle to, to show yeah. it off. So make sure when you get it that you take pictures and drop it in yes. the, the chat right below here because we'd love to see it and make everybody else jealous, and then they could go to swag.com <laughs> and get the, get their own kit. So that's that's our whole goal is to make other people feel, you know, that's like right. they don't have something adding, that other people have. Adding FOMO one right. show at a time. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you so much for this right. show, and I thank you. I'm yeah. glad that we got you on and um yeah yes, so um thank you for in. all your participation and your your comments and we'll go back in and answer those that we missed during the show today but uh, appreciate andy yeah. giving us such great stuff and we'll see you on thursday with holly homer and then friday don't you have a, i mean that thursday don't you have a pinning party as well elisa we do we have a pinterest get together uh right. five five eastern yeah yeah so come on <laughs> pin with us learn with us have a good yeah. time and don't forget to yeah. download this uh, this guide that uh, they put together at Tailwind, bit.ly forward slash TW Survive and Thrive. That's bit.ly forward slash TW Survive and Thrive. Survive and, thrive. and with that, <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye now. Thanks.